Hi, welcome back to Educator.com's AP Music Theory course. Today's lesson is on binary and ternary forms. So the lesson objectives for today are pretty simple. We're going to just learn to write and then recognize uh, binary forms. And then we're going to do the same thing with ternary forms. So first we'll uh, look at the structure of the forms and then we'll write them out in a four-part style. So let's do a little diagram for binary forms. So kind of similar to the uh, periods that we saw in the previous lesson on form. So a binary form is different in that it has two parts, obviously. So we'll make a little dividing line for the part here. And we'll choose a key just so we can use um, some relationships. So if the form is, for instance, starting in major, it will consist of initial phrase here so there will be this A phrase that, of course, starts on 1 and has a sort of cadence in the middle. So maybe a, a half cadence on 5. And then there will be another phrase which can be, uh, for instance, a variation of the first phrase. So maybe I'll call it A prime. And this will start on 1 again and can also move to not so much a half cadence as a cadence on the dominant uh, degree. And then in the second part, <coughs> so here we've sort of moved to G major, and then commonly what happens in the second part is we begin the piece in this new key that we've cadenced on, and we've got a B phrase now. And what happens is that this music basically works its way back into an authentic cadence in the original key of C. And so what happens here can either be a incomplete authentic cadence in G would work. So here we have a 1 in G and then a 5, 1 and then the music works its way back to C. So we would have a 5 and a 1 in C. <coughs> and these phrases can also be uh, parallel. So there's this A phrase and a variation on the A idea, and then a B phrase, and then a variation on that phrase. And these uh, phrases are mostly going to be, the A's and the B's are all dealing with the melodic ideas. And we're just going to stick to the uh, underlying uh, structural forms uh, today. And if you want to flesh them out, that's something that um, can be done by just elaborating on the harmonies and introducing uh, rhythms and uh, non-harmonic tones and things like that. But let's uh, take a look at the underlying this structure and create a four-part version of a binary form. So now we're going to write this binary form in four parts in this chorale style that we've been doing. So let's stick to the roadmap that we made in the previous uh, slide. So we'll start in C major on 1. And the first section of the form will end on the in G on the dominant. So let's say it will be a 5 in C and a 1 in G. And then eventually, of course, we're going to end in C on 1. And here we're going to start in G on 1. And there will be some sort of, uh, we can use a pivot chord uh, modulation to get back to C. <coughs> so let's fill in the bass line for what we can. C, G, G, and C. <coughs> and of course, this is going to be preceded by a 5, a 5. And this is going to be preceded by 5. OK, so now we've got uh, two phrases to make. So let's just make a line here. So this is not a measure. I'm just uh, dividing the staff in two for our two phrases. 
and we'll call this a and we'll call this a prime and let's say we want to come to a half cadence here so now again I know that this is going to be a five chord <coughs> so now let's just make a harmonic progression that makes sense leading to this half cadence so maybe I want to elaborate this first note with the lower neighbor which is of course most commonly harmonized with the 5-6 and then move to a 1-6 and then a 2 and finally end on the 5. So again this progression makes sense because I've been careful to always follow uh, dominant harmony with uh, tonic harmony and then uh, everything else is just a mixture of tonic and subdominant with no dominant harmony going to uh, subdominant harmony. And now to do this modulation uh, maybe I'm just going to treat this half cadence 5 as the pivot chord for G in 1. So Maybe I'll follow it with another one in G and then, uh, oh, except we're not doing the modulation yet. That happens in the next phrase. So actually, this is going to start in C again. And now I'd just like to make a little variation on this. So instead of going down to B, maybe I'll go up to F and then down to E. So the most common way to harmonize is this would be either a 4 or a 2 6. So I'll choose a 4. And this is, of course, a 1 6. <coughs> and then maybe I'll go down by step. So this is, again, the passing 6 4 motion. So five, six, four, two, one, <coughs> and then that leads nicely by step to five of five and to five. So now let's add the upper voices for uh, this first half of the binary form. So you'll notice for these <coughs> uh, six chords, I choose this open spacing where I omit the third in the upper voices since it's in the bass, and then I just double the note in the soprano, uh, which in both cases is a G. And now... Then we move to this D minor chord and then to the five chord. So I'm going to need this G up here. G, D, B. And that's our half cadence. And then starting here, I'll start in the same position. And moving to an F major <clears throat> and now again to a 1-6 in this open spacing and for the 6-4 I have to be careful to uh, double the bass so the D is here and here in the upper voice and then G C E <clears throat> and now we're going to move to this uh, five of five, and let's make it a five seven of five actually. So <clears throat> we will move this G down to an F sharp, and then this C will stay on C, and the E will move 
down to a D. <clears throat> so we've got an incomplete uh, seventh chord here. The fifth is omitted, which is fine because we have all the color notes, the third and the seventh. And then in resolving this to the G major, we need to make sure to take the leading tone up a step and the seventh down a step. And we can keep the D here. So now we can consider these two chords as being part of this G major thinking, which is continued here in the second phrase, or uh, in the second section of the binary form, I should say. So let's say we want to take this to a half cadence on G. <clears throat> And then from there, we'll start in G, and we want this to end up in C. So we'll need to plan out some sort of uh, pivot chord modulation. But first, let's fill in the first section of the B section. So G, maybe we can begin by using the same sort of motion we did here. So F sharp G for 5, 6, and 1. <clears throat> and then you can jump down to 6, and then 4, and then that brings us nicely to 5. <clears throat> and for the second section, let's go with G down to E again, so back to the minor 6 chord, and back to the four chord, and this is a C major chord, so let's start our uh, pivot modulation here. So this is one in C now, and let's follow it immediately by uh, five, six, five. So now we're gonna introduce the seventh, the dominant seventh in C and then back to one, and then here let's have a two, six, five, leading to five and one, and let's make this a five, seven, two. So adding the seventh really uh, emphasizes the idea that this is a dominant chord and not to be confused with this uh, tonic G major. And now the upper voices. Actually, I want to start this here. Uh, let's see, D on D, G, B. And then I can go to D, A, D, and back to D, G, B. And then moving down, uh, root position chords moving by thirds, which means there's going to be two common tones, the G and the B. I'm going to fill in the E. And the same thing here, so the E and the G and the B moving up to the C. And now we just need to introduce contrary motion. So D, F sharp, and A. And here's our half cadence. And the next phrase, I will start higher. G, B, D. And remember, so there's a fermata here, and this is a half cadence. So we don't need to be as concerned about leading from this chord to this chord, since this is, uh, in a sense, the start of a new phrase. So here's the C major chord, and actually it's uh, in the same position as where I started. Uh, let's see, so G, D, and here's the seventh chord, the F, and I'll put it in the top voice so we really hear it. And 
and then from C major moving to this 265 which means it's a D minor 7th chord so I want to carry the 7th over so here's the C and then move the G to well let's move it to an, the A and the E down to a D and now this seventh is going to go resolve downwards to the B in this 5-7 chord and the D will jump up to the F and the A will go down to G and now all we have to do is again resolve the seventh and the leading tone and carry the G over and so we're back in C major and this completes our binary form uh, skeleton so again uh, in order to elaborate this uh, all that needs to be done is to think about a meter 3 4 or 4 4 and then integrating these harmonies into a um, musical context by maybe using one of the voices like the top voice as the skeleton of a melody and keeping to this underlying structure and cadence structure uh, just to make sure that the form works out the way that it's uh, supposed to. Okay now let's look at the diagram of a uh, ternary form. So of course ternary form uh, differs from binary form by having three parts instead of two and uh, the outer parts of the ternary form end up being similar in this case, so A and A prime, and then it's the middle section that is provides a different or a contrasting section, and this contrast can be, uh, you know, can be a different key or different kind of musical uh, texture or mood or any number of things uh, or a combination of these things so if we are again starting in C major then our A section would be maybe from 1 to um, to a half cadence on 5 which uh, <coughs> or you could even think of it as a modulation to the dominant and then that sets us up for our B section to begin in a new key so this would start in G and then make its way back to C at the end or actually here would make its way back to C and this music would be designed to stay in G and then having our A prime section start in the new key and modulate back to C by the end. So let's see, so this is some sort of modulation and then here again we are going to use a pivot chord modulation to achieve these uh, two key shifts. And of course, we could have also gone to maybe the relative minor here, uh, A minor instead of G major, and then the music would make its way back from A minor to C major. So let's uh, write out the skeleton, kind of the harmonic skeleton of a ternary form, the way we did with binary form. So we'll be in C major, and we want the opening section, which let's say it goes to here, to modulate to G. So start on 1 here, and this will be a 1 in G. And then the middle section will again start in G.
and we'll stay in G all the way until we get here. So somewhere along the line in the, so here's A, B, and back to A. So somewhere along the line here, we will modulate back to C. So here's G, <clears throat> and here we're still in G. So let's uh, start filling in this uh, plan then. So let's see, we need to end up in G, so we're going to need some sort of pivot chord. So can move from C. Let's move from 1 to 5 to 1 to 6. And let's treat this 6 as the pivot chord. So of course this A minor chord in C major also appears in G major as the 2 chord, uh, which means it's a subdominant harmony, so we can use it to get to the dominant in G. And then we'll go to 1. And then we'll do this 5-6 motion for the end. So here we've got a inauthentic cadence. And then for the B section, so we're just going to stay in G for the duration of the B section. So let's go with G down to 6 and then down again by 3rd to 4. <clears throat> and then five. And now maybe we can have a little uh, deceptive progression. So instead of five to one, I'll go five to six. And then back down to the fourth scale degree, but this time I'll harmonize it with two, six, five. and then 5, 7, and 1. And now for the final section, we're starting in G again, and we want to make sure to pivot back to C major. So I'll use this, uh, let's see, G, go to 5, and 1, just like we did here. And then I will move to, let's see, we can move to the four chord, which is a C major chord. So now we can start thinking of it as one in C major. And to emphasize that, maybe we can do this five, six to one motion in the bass. So this. C, B, C. And now we just need to fill out the rest of our uh, C major with a cadence. So I'll move to 4 and 5, 7, and 1. All right, so now all we need to do is fill in uh, the upper voices, and we'll have this uh, ternary form all fleshed out skeletally at least and uh, I won't do the upper voices now because it'll be the exact same as we did in the previous lesson and we've had a lot of practice with this by now uh, filling in the upper voices so I'll move on to the examples. So for example one let's uh, think about uh, completing the first section of a binary form. So we'll split this in half, and so we want to do, if our diagram of a binary form is A, A, and then B, B, <clears throat> and let's say we're asked to do it 
in uh, G major. So we're starting on 1, and we know that it's going to end up <clears throat> uh, over the course of it to modulate to 5. So we'll modulate to D here. And maybe we want this section to end on a half cadence. So here's a 5, and here's a 1. So and we don't need to worry about the second section because we're just going to write the first half of the binary form. So let's write in the key signature. And our first chord and the half cadence here. <coughs> so 1 and 5. And then the second section, starting on 1 and ending on a D, which will be a new one. And so now we the first section we can just fill in uh, G major harmonic progression. So let's use this descending thirds idea again. So six to four to five, and then let's move to a deceptive progression, <coughs> and then to a two six to a five. And then for the second section, we need to think about modulating to the dominant. So let's make sure we know our pivot chords and which chords G major and D major uh, have in common. So let's begin by making this bass motion. So 5, 6 to 1. And then let's move to 2, 6, to 5, and now uh, this 5 is a D major chord, so if we like we can reinterpret it as 1 in D major, and let's emphasize that by immediately moving to 5 in D major, and back to, actually, and then let's take that to 6, and then back to 4, let's see, and then 5, 7, and 1. So this is, uh, again, using the 7th to really uh, strongly emphasize that uh, we're in D major now and not uh, G major. OK, so here is the first half of the binary form in G major, which modulates to the dominant D major. OK, for example two, let's do the first half again of a binary form, uh, this time in a minor key. So let's do it in A minor. So let's make our little plan here. So we're going to have this A phrase followed by A prime phrase. And since we're in a minor key, <clears throat> instead of modulating to uh, the uh, dom key of the dominant, let's modulate to the relative major. So by the end here, we're going to be in C major. And let's end on a half cadence for our first phrase. <clears throat> So here's A, and here's the half cadence, and here's A again, and then we're going to end on C, so we know there's going to be a cadence in C here. So first we just need some music in A minor. This uh, repeated bass line is, of course, the pedal or neighboring 6 4. So it's 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And here I'll use another 6 4, the passing 6 4. So 5, 6, 4, 1, 6. 
And I'll just continue this motion up by step. And we'll make this a four chord and lead that to the five for the half cadence. And then for the second half, we now need to modulate or pivot chord back to C major. So we'll have to keep in mind what chords the two keys have in common. So let's start with this passing motion again. So this is a passing 6-4. So 1-6. And then I'll continue moving by step. So here is a 4 chord, D minor. And of course D minor occurs in C major as a 2 chord. So let's reinterpret it. as a two chord, which is going to move to five. So here's five. And let's use this bass line, which is another idiomatic progression. So it's five moving to five, four, two, to one, six. So again, because we have the dominant note in the bass moving to the fourth scale degree, and usually we would uh, harmonize the fourth scale degree with a subdominant tri uh, triad like two or four, but not when it's following five. So really the only way to harmonize this would be with a five, four, two, which again, since the seventh is in the bass, needs to resolve down to a one, six. And then this leads nicely to a five, make this a five, seven, one in C. So here's our first half of binary form in a minor key. And for the third example, let's do the second half of a binary form in major. So to do it, we'll still have to diagram the whole form. So we'll use C major. And so we'll start in one, and then this is going to end in Let's say we go to the sub key of the subdominant this time. So F is going to be the cadence here. So this piece will actually start in the section that we're going to write is going to start in F major with a half cadence here. <clears throat> and then modulate back to C. So here's the cadence in C major. So we know that we have F major and a half cadence. And then F major and a authentic cadence in C. So five. One and somewhere in this section there will be another pivot chord modulation. But for now we just need some music in F major. So one to four. And we've got the key signature for C major, so we need to be careful to add the correct accidentals. So four down to two and then five, one, and then that'll take us to the half cadence, five. <clears throat> and now let's think about making a modulation. So I'll start out with this pedal six, four baseline. And then move to, let's see, move to a passing 6-4. So this is 5, 6, 4, 1, 6. <clears throat> and so this F major triad occurs in C major as 4, so let's Think of this as being 4-6 in C major. So 
So if we were in C major on a 4-6, what we might do is jump down to F as a 2-6, and then that leads us nicely to this 5, which I'll make a 5-7, and to 1. And for the last example, let's do the second half of a binary form in a minor key. So we'll be in A minor. And so this minor binary form can often uh, modulate to the relative major. So <clears throat> this first half will have modulated to C. So that's where we'll start for the second half on one in C major and we'll move that to a half cadence in C and then the second half will move from one in C to one in A so there'll be a cadence in A at the end so actually I should write C here And then here's the half cadence. So again, I write these cadences out as goal posts so I know where I want the bass line to head, both melodically and harmonically. And then C. <clears throat> and we're going to end with 5, 1, and A. So the first section nothing new, just uh, some music in C major. Let's harmonize an ascending bass line. So one, this should be very familiar by now, the passing six four. And then can make this a two, six, and let's even fill in this whole step between F and G with the secondary dominant. So this would be a 5, 6, let's just make it a 5, 6, a 5, and then we'll hold here on the 5. And back in C major, now we need to think about pivoting to uh, a chord that it shares with A minor. So let's go up to G and use this bass line, which is 5, 4, 2 to 1, 6. And then <coughs> let's <coughs> move 1, 6 to 1 to 6. So 6 is an A minor chord, so let's think of that as 1 in A minor and move it to a 1, 6, and then, oops, and then a 4. And then have that 4 progress to our cadence, the 5 and the 1. And that completes our modulation back from our relative major key to the minor key, and would be the second half of this binary form in A minor. Okay, thanks for watching educator.com's AP Music Theory course. See you next time.